is going on DFS Army? Cascade coming at you one more time. TGIF. It's August 16, 2019. Going to talk a little bit of uh, wide receivers, tight ends, week one, super early. Just a little discussion, see where things are at, how we're uh, see maybe where some chalk's going to pop up. Maybe uh, going over some guys, maybe they're good in GPPs. Again, we're three, four weeks out, but it's always fun to talk a little football, and uh, why not? Um, before I start, um, for you that's uh, not a follower or subscriber, um, please give me a follow or subscribe on, on Twitch or YouTube. Um, that way you know when I come on, do these videos, and hopefully keep producing these, and uh, all the VIP stuff um, will be coming up this season. Uh, all the preseason stuff is VIP, so I'll be doing another video today for the preseason stuff. Um, if you're not a DFS Army member, um, use promo code CASHCAKE, save 20%. A little over a dollar a day, you get freaking all sports. Uh, NFL, college football, NFL preseason, uh, basketball coming up. We got e EPL um, tomorrow morning for you guys that, that like, love soccer. Um, shoot, we even got tennis. Just everything, one price. We, we don't nickel and dime it here. Um, so let's, uh, let's dive in here. Uh, welcome Tommy Trips. What's up, man? What's going on, wise and born? Um, last night, preseason. Let's just talk about that real quick. I just want to give a quick shout out to, um, B.W. Knowles. He took down the $4.44 FanDuel tournament. Um, again, we offer notes. Chris has his notes up and projections over at DFS Army, and he used those to take down the four dollar forty four cent for five grand last night. So congratulations to BW Knowles, man. It was awesome. <clears throat> well, I said your name correctly. <laughs> I, I went to school with a, with a Weisenborn. Um, but yeah, man, got any questions? Let's just talk. Um, but let's let's start with wide receivers real quick. Um, kind of see. We talked uh, quarterbacks and running backs the other day, and kind of talked how we're kind of pay down a little bit at quarterback. And at running back, we'll probably spin up a little bit um, just because quarterback and running back are your less volatile positions and you want to usually spend your money at the running back position. Again, we have some question marks with Zeke, if he's going to hold out or not. Um, like I said, that opened up Pollard and whatnot. But I think thinking we're going to spin up at the running back a little bit, um, we're probably going to have some value here at wide receiver we're going to look at. is going to be a little bit more... Um, the way to go in cash games, but there's some definitely ways to pivot off that um, in GPPs. Um, but let's uh, let's first start at the top here. Um, you know we we got you know Beckham, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, and Tyreek Hill. If I just bunch all those three together, um, I wouldn't go anywhere in cash with those guys because you're just not going to be able to afford them. I think with the running backs that you're going to want to play. Um, I think with the guy we'll talk about for Tampa Bay that'll be more popular in cash, Mike Evans makes a great leverage playoff in tournaments. I think he'll be lower owned because he's a little bit more expensive. Um, same with Julio Jones. I think he'd go down to Ridley. Um, and I think Julio Jones, even though it's going to be a shootout, he's more of a GPP play at, at eight, eight grand. Um, and then Beckham, I just, there's so many weapons on that team and having him be the most expensive um, he would just be only a GPP play because there's just so many ways they can go there. Um, so if we go down a little bit here, um, the A.J. Green injury is going to open up some things and it's going to kind of push push some ownership on Boyd for sure when we start talking about guys down in that you know 5 to 6K range. So having, having that injury, uh, we saw in the preseason the first couple games with, with – uh, Dalton and, and AJ, I'm sorry, and AJ uh, and Boyd. We saw that connection with Tyler Boyd and and uh, Dalton last year when when he was injured as well. So I tend to like to uh, pay. I, I tend to like to pay down at uh, wide receiver and cash games when I build them, um, and then maybe spend up in tournaments. Again, it's the most volatile position besides tight end and defense on the board. So you're really going to uh, uh, again, build your around your quarterback and running back first when you build lineups, single entry, cash, and then then worry about your wide receivers. I ne I never start there. Um, 
Well, awesome, Tommy. Um, congrats on uh, catching last night in 16 or 20 double ups, man. Great to have you aboard with the DFS Army. Uh, yeah, we're, we'll have a sheet out tonight and uh, projections and and definitely on this three gamer. And, and I hopefully do a video here in a couple hours um, on some of the plays that I like as well. And, and hopefully we can just keep the train rolling on preseason. It's been it's been pretty good over the last uh, you know five or six slates that they've had. We're on the fifth slate, I think. Um, let's just keep it rolling. So. Wiseburn says, typically pay down because you're paying up a running back. Yeah, for wide receiver, I typically pay down. Uh, I don't typically want to spend up a wide receiver when I'm building a single entry or a cash team. I'll live in the 5 to 6K range, and then I probably have one wide receiver that's in the 4K range. It's under 5K. His typical builds, again, every week's different. Um, depending on the Zeke situation as well, if, if we get Zeke going to hold out and not play, and talk about Pollard as running back, well, that also could open up Amari Cooper getting some more um, work here as well. And two of Amari Cooper's ceiling games that he had last year that broke the slate, uh, they did come at home. So um, being at home against the Giants, we know the Giants are going to be really bad this year. Um, and if, if Zeke holds out, then maybe we see a... a a big Cooper game here. Again, there's the contract issues that they have right now. Um, I think they kind of get some of this ironed out, and we'll know before week one. But uh, I do like Cooper at this price a little bit more than the other guys um, that are priced up. If you're going to look for guys uh, maybe in cash games. But I still think there's two clear-cut cash games here when we get a little bit further down the list. Um, this game here with uh, Thielen and Diggs having $100 apart. Uh, that game's going to be, you know, it's projected to be a shootout. It's one of the higher over-under games. Um, you can, you know, stack them with, with a cheap Cousins for sure. You can play either one of them. Um, I think at their prices, you don't want to play both of them. You probably want to pick one of them. I would say, you know, Thielen will probably be more popular. It's hard to say. Even 100 apart, they might be split down the, the line. I think, I think what you do is if you build a lineup, and you have um, Diggs in one, just build another one and have Thielen in the other one. So I don't think you have to go, um, definitely don't have to go in the same lineup. T.Y. Hilton, uh, being in L.A., I prefer him when he's at home on the turf. I, I tend not to play him very much when he's, when he's on grass. I just like him when he's on turf. He's just faster. Um, and then we have Cooks Woods. And if we go down a little bit, we have Cooper Cup. Um, with these three guys, are all in play with the Chargers. Another big over-under game. Going into Carolina, it's a close spread. Uh, I think what you want to do here with Cooper Cup, he's only like eight or nine months off, uh, I believe it was an ACL tear last year. Um, let me check. Yeah, off an ACL injury. It's really going to be hard to play him week one because I just don't know how he's going to be. Um Especially when wouldn't touch a guy like this in cash games, and in tournaments, it's it's kind of rough because there's other guys around him that are going to be probably get a way higher target share in week one, um, and I don't know how much they'll push him. So I'm kind of a way to approach a C on him, and then on the other two guys, Woods and Cooks. How I usually play these guys each week is Woods is usually a cash game play for me, um, just the way he runs routes, and he's more of a possession guy over the middle, and then Cooks is you know takes the top off and can go deep anytime. So he'd be your big GPP play. Any of these guys that can take the top off and get you, you know, 90-yard bomb um, and put up almost, you know, what, <clears throat> 16 DraftKings points in one play are always uh, tournament guys to look at. And so, and then we come down here to what's probably going to be a little bit your area you're going to look in cash games here. Um Godwin is going to be extremely popular week one. Um, Adam Humphreys is, is shipped out. He's over in Tennessee now. And so Godwin is definitely going to be the number two guy behind behind our, our, our guy up there, Mike Evans. So at 6,200 um, in a game against San Francisco, it's, again, a really high team total. We see some chemistry, uh, again, with Arians coming over. I think we're going to see a lot of work out of Godwin. Um, so I can really see him being extremely popular, and he'd be one of the guys that I would start with in cash games. 
um, at week one starting right now. Um, going up to, to Galladay a little bit more, uh, his price will be, you know, being that close to him, he'll have a lot less ownership than Godwin. Um, I kind of like him as the pivot off of Godwin and GPPs where you go up to me, Mike Evans, instead of Godwin, and then go to, to Galladay. Usually we'd be worried about Arizona, um, but Patrick Peterson is going to be suspended for, I don't know if it's it four games. I can't, I can't remember how, I think it's four games. But anyways, we don't have to worry about the coverage anymore for him. So I think we can fire him up in tournaments as a leverage play off of Godwin. Um, take a quick question here by Weisenborn. He says, for cash games, what are you typically looking for in wide receiver? Targets, target share, obviously touchdowns are fluky and hard to predict. Yeah, touchdowns are definitely hard to predict. For me, it's going to be a uh, number of targets and target share for that team. And that's why um, we're looking at guys like we talked about. We'll lead right into Tyler Boyd here. So that target that uh, target share for A.J. Green is all going to float to Boyd. You know, He's going to be the number one now. If you get a number one wide receiver um, against, again, it's a Seattle defense, it's in Seattle, but the number of targets he's going to get, you can almost predict – Close to double-digit targets for a guy that's 5,800. 5, um, you just kind of lock those in. You're, I'm not predicting touchdowns. You're just predicting a, as many targets or target share that they're going to get. If it's going to be a high, you know, look at the offenses. If, it, if it's going to be an up-tempo offense, are they going to get a lot of uh, snaps in? You know, is it going to be a back-and-forth game? You know, just not a grind-out game. Um, like I said, with, with T.Y. Hilton, I prefer him when he's, when he's in the dome and when he's on the racetrack than I do when he's out on grass. Uh, but I think your two cash game guys in this range right now are probably going to be Godwin and Boyd. They're just going to eat up uh, a lot of that ownership for the games that they're playing in and the roles that they're going to have in that um, on those respective teams. Um, again, Lockett and Jeffrey are more GPP plays. You wouldn't play those guys in cash at all. Lockett can take the top off at any moment. Talked about Cup and coming off the ACL. <clears throat> Again, with Landry, he's a great receiver. He could eat up some of those uh, Odell Beckham um, share, target share. So I don't really want to target him. At 5,600 is great. Great GPP play. I'd probably have more him than, than Beckham at his price. But there's so many weapons on that team that uh, it's really hard to, to play these guys when I know there's guys up here in cash that are going to get more of that target share. Um, DJ Moore, again, in that game's priced a little bit more. I prefer playing Samuel. Um, we come down here at 4200 I prefer him, especially at that price, 4200 I think that's a cash play in an environment that uh, it's going to have some points been put up. So I do like that price on him as a cash or GPP play. <clears throat> um, come up the board a little bit here. Again, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the tight end here with the Giants situation with, with Shepard um, and Tate. Um, I think that we're going to get a tight end that, that could get a double-digit targets himself. So uh, <clears throat> so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about him when we get to tight end a little bit here. Not sure in the Arizona situation with Fitz, Fitz, Fitzgerald, but at 4,900, he's always in play. Um, I just feel like watching... Murray over the first two preseason games. They've struggled in the drives they've been out there. Um, didn't look fantastic. I think he's going to have some growing pains here um, in a team that's going to struggle a little bit. So him and Kirker would be GPP only. Even if there's prices, it, it's kind of tough to trust him. Um, again, I'd rather take – than Alshon Jeffrey, I'd rather take uh, Jackson here. He can take the top off even at his age with Philly and no problem. And he's a good pair up with Wentz. I'll take a question here from Weisenboarding, and he says, uh, do you find it easier to fake chalk wide receivers because of how much variance there is in the position? Um, or do you want to eat the chalk, guys like Boyd and, and Godwin? So, great question, Weisenboarding. I think for cash games, I'll just, of course, I'll eat that chalk. I think they're going to get the target share and whatnot. And then when I look between, say, Boyd and Godwin, I would rather get off the Godwin chalk and then eat the Boyd chalk. And the only reason I say that is I don't. I think they're going to have to go to Boyd if they're going to stay competitive in that game. They don't have a whole lot of other options that I think they're, um, are fantastic there. I know we'll look down at some of the guys that, that they do have on that team for Cincy. And they're all cheap guys that are GPPs, but like they got a 
they got a John Ross. Uh, let's see here. Let's just look at Cincinnati here. We'll bring them up. And what I mean by looking at the wide receiver core. So, so they got John Ross here. He's 3,900. Erickson or core. They just don't have a lot here. Um, we saw what Tate put up, but he's not the best wide receiver in the world, and I don't think we're going to see a ton of him in the regular season. Um, but he had a good game in preseason and won some guys some money. But there's, I would just rather eat that Boyd chalk and then in GPPs play, play these three guys. But if we go back and look at the Tampa Bay situation, um, and if Godwin's is going to be twice as much ownership, say, as, as a Mike Evans, um, then on GPPs, I would just rather spend my money up on Mike Evans and hope that he has the big game and Godwin doesn't, and then kind of hedge that in some of the big field GPPs uh, because there is another receiver that can easily go off there. So that's how I kind of approach chalk. I don't think – I think when you're going to eat chalk, um, it's best to eat the running back chalk and not the wide receiver chalk. Uh, the wider receivers are going like – you, like you stated, um, with the variance and how volatile that position is, it's just much easier to get off, you know, the chalk and wide receiver and win that way and, and make your lineups different and differentiate yourself than – than to eat that. Um, <clears throat> one more question by uh, Tommy Trips. He says, uh, do you ride or die with one cash lineup? Um, I would think that would be best so you don't worry about the, the what ifs. So I do. I only make one cash lineup per site. Um, there might be times where I will make two if it's, say, a quarterback that I'm on the fence with and they're very similar priced. I would make two cash lineups and just have different quarterbacks. But that is a very rare situation for me. I will just make one cash lineup and run it through all the contests and cash that I'm running. Uh, I just think it's it's better that way. Um, I know some people make two or three different ones, but I'd rather focus my energy in making just one cash lineup and riding it um, on all sites. You know, I'll make a different one, of course, for every site because there are prices and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, j I just like to run one cash lineup there. Tommy Trips, good question. Uh, where did I left off? Let's go back down here to the bottom range so we can find something. Like I talked about Samuel. Um, again, I think he's cash viable here a little bit um, in that game, and he's cheaper. I prefer him over over his uh, running partner there. Um, Crowder could get some get some look here. I think with the with the Jets, I prefer I prefer uh, Anderson. You know, Robbie Anderson showed last year. You know that he's he's a legit receiver at 5200. Um, I don't mind taking chances at him in GPPs. I don't think I would want him in in cash games or any part of that Jets offense really until I can kind of see how it's going to pan out. But in tournaments, we we've seen him win some tournaments with some big games, and I think that's just going to continue. Um, so again, let's come down here to in the 4K range. Like I said, it's pretty ugly around here. I don't think. Depending on, um, I guess we could look at a guy like Trey Quinn for Washington. He's been injured this preseason, and uh, and so we haven't seen him. So if he if he does play, I don't mind him at his price out of the slot. We have seen kids he get a lot of run. He had a pretty bad game last game, but. Washington as a whole did, but he did have a good first preseason game, and it looked like um, both quarterbacks really were targeting him. So if if, if Quinn was going to be out, I don't mind if, if we think Kidsey's going to be there. I think your wide receiver, that you're, it's a good GPP play that you are you don't really see in the preseason because I think they know what they have in him, and he's a great wide receiver as McLaurin. Um, he's the kind of guy that can win you a GPP, and – we haven't seen a lot of them because I think Washington knows what they have in them, and he can take the top off. He can do everything. So he's the kind of guy that I like to look at down in this low range where you're just kind of um, finding a guy that can win you a GPP when you come down in this 3K range. So really after that, <clears throat> there's only one other guy that was on my list here besides McLaurin that was down here. Oh, yeah, it's right. Uh, Rashad Higgins. So Callaway suspended, 
And again, this is just a GPP play, but they have just abundance of riches in, in Cleveland, and it's crazy to say that. But with but with uh, Beckham at the top and Callaway at the bottom and being suspended, Higgins at 3,200 um, is a guy that showed that can catch some balls, and he doesn't have to do a lot there. Um, if you were going to come down, you know, and you really needed a cheap guy to take, he would probably be more safe, but I still think you have bigger upside with McLaurin. Um, but we just kind of have to see. You know, we've been seeing um, our Sega Whiteside do some things in week one of preseason, but Philly's so deep, he probably would be a wide receiver four if he does even make that rotation. So it's kind of ugly down here. A Noonwa 3,800 again is another one of the guys that just deep GPP play. Um, we could look at a. It's really about it. There's there's not a lot, and you're just grasping for straws down here. So, let's just move to tight end. I think we've covered quite a bit of things. So, um, if we head over to tight end, it's basically three guys, and then it drops off a ton. Of course, with Kelsey Kittle and Ertz, um, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. I think, you know, Wentz has a special connection with Ertz, and he set a record. And there's no way he's going to come do what he did last year um, I don't I don't think you know I think you'll have a great year but he won't have one of those like historic years like last year with the number of uh, targets and receptions he saw you know Kelsey is always in play but paying 7100 and say a cash lineup is just not going to happen you're not going to have the money to get there but again tournaments if you're spending down other positions and want to spin up a tight end it's definitely a way to go but uh you can't go wrong with any of these guys. We'll see what Garoppolo does with Kittle. Again, all these guys are mega upside, but you're, you're spending for them. Um, so let's just talk about the more of the guys that we can probably get to. Um, but first, let's let's go to a question. Wisemore has a question. He goes, what's your typical strategy for tight end? Pay all the way up or all the way down? Um, for cash games, I tend to look for uh, mid-range to low. I like to get, find a cheap tight end for cash games. Again, because it's a volatile position, I want to spend my money at the running back position and find the stud guy that's going to get all the work um, and get me those get me those points and then try to find a tight end that's going to get targets. He might be all the way at the bottom. He might be at mid-range. It really depends each week. But typically, lineup construction on DraftKings for me is I'm paying down for a tight end. Um, like we're talking about with the Giants, with some of the struggles they're going to have this year and then with their wide receiver either suspended or hurt, um, Evan Ingram could be extremely popular guy or a guy you want to look at in this range um, at 4,800. He's going to get a lot of work, I believe, in this game. I think they're going to be playing from behind with Dallas. Um, it's it's one of those, you know, let's look at the opportunity we can get. And I think he can put up, you know, 10-plus targets here. And if you can get 10-plus targets out of a tight end, you, you have to consider a guy like that. It's just... Uh, it's rare that you can say outside of the top three guys that we named um, that you'll find a guy that can get 10, 10 plus targets. And I think in this situation early in the year, you're going to look at look at an Ingram, um, and and he, he'll be I don't know if he'll be extremely popular, but he'll be a guy that I'm looking at maybe for cash games. Um, when you look at Eric Ebron, it's really tough with Indy. I do like to look at their tight ends more on the road because again, like I said, I I prefer Hilton at home on the track and then the tight ends on the road. But you're guessing between Jack Doyle and Ebron. They just have a rich as a tight end, and you don't know which one's going to go off. Um, Doyle seems to be a little safer with the catches. Ebron caught about every touchdown last year. Um, I think we're going to see a big uptick in Henry this year. Um, He's off almost a full year of his his ACL tear. So he's back fully healthy. And at 3,900, he's probably the guy I would look at if I'm not going to go up to Ingram and Cash just as a first glance. Um, and then it's it's basically you're you're just guessing now at this point. I I would like to stick around the Ingram or Henry at first glance here for Week One, but for tournaments, <clears throat> again, all these guys are in play. Not really a big Rudolph guy, even though that's a good game. Um, I think I've lost more money playing him than won money. Greg Olson's always a play if he can stay healthy. Again, it's week one. Maybe he can stay healthy at 3,200. 
He's got big upside. We've seen it year after year. Eifert, he'll be healthy week one. Um, with A.J. Green gone, maybe we'll see a little bit more work out of Eifert um, if they do start shifting some coverage over to Boyd. And then we get down to here, you know. It's like, oh, look, Jason Winton's back. You know, that broadcasting job didn't pan out too well for him, so he thought he'd come play some football for the Cowboys again. So um, it really is not a ton to love down here, you know. Some... I think I'm basically staying in that 3K range or up. I think we'll have the money to do it. And I don't think I would go under... I don't think I'd go under 3K on week one for a tight end. I think we have enough guys in play that have um, double-digit double fantasy points that uh, we don't really need to look there. So, again, those that's kind of a quick rundown of wide receiver and tight end for week one. I know it's super early. Um, I know that, you know, things can change, injuries in the preseason. Um, you know, the lineups that we think we're going to make now might be so different than we'll make three to four weeks from now when we make those initial lineups. But it's always good to kind of make a lineup now to see where you're at and then, then trying to do all this a couple days out. And when we have the salaries that are out this early, um, start building some lineups and see where things are at. It'll make it much easier to make those pivots if we do see some injuries. And, and one great thing about playing um, NFL preseason football is you can kind of see how these other guys are doing. That if an injury does happen, you've kind of seen the chemistry between the quarterback and wide receiver or running back, how he's done in those positions when, um, when maybe the public is not, you know, didn't, didn't take the, the chance to look at preseason football and seeing how some of those guys play. So playing preseason football definitely helps that if we do see some injuries here creeping up to week one. Um, but I hope that was helpful to see wide receiver and tight end. Um, and keep doing some different videos, maybe, you know, do a deep GPP video or some single entry, um, some game theory stuff. Uh, we're going to have all kinds of stuff over at DFS Army, a lot of stuff this year. We're going to be covering everything. So, uh, again, head over to DFSArmy.com. Enter promo code CASHCAKE, save you 20%. And uh, let's help you win today, man. I will see you later. Deuces.